Hi, my name is Methat El Masri. The topic for today is mixing Blazor with ASP.NET MVC. The source code for the demo that we're going to do is at the bottom of this slide. With ASP.NET Core, you have many choices. These are the different flavors of ASP.NET templates that are available. You can create two types of backend web applications, MVC or Razor pages. With Blazor, you can create Razor components. Web API allows you to render headless applications that essentially means that they are not visual. Of course, you can consume and view data for these types of apps with JavaScript. ASP.NET Core was built from the ground up in a modular fashion. Once you instantiate your builder object, you can configure Web API controllers. You can also configure MVC controllers or Razor views, and you also get to configure routing. The choice is yours. You can map controllers and Blazor, and new to .NET 8.0 is the ability to map Razor components. This makes it possible for you to mix Blazor into other types of ASP.NET applications. Why Razor components? Well, this is a full stack C Sharp solution with little or no JavaScript. It offers enhanced productivity and it offers a variety of rendering options. You've got server side Blazor, you have client side Blazor, which is also known as Wasm, and new to .NET 8.0 is static server rendering. We now have a component tag helper that allows us to inject Razor components into MVC views or Razor pages views. Let's go through a demo whereby we're going to integrate Blazor into an existing ASP.NET Core MVC app. Let's create an MVC application. That would be .NET new MVC, and we'll give it the name MVC with Blazor. Let's go into this newly created directory, and we need to add one component, and that component is the Blazor component that we want to inject into the MVC application. So there is this free Blazor component called Quick Grid. It allows you to list data, sort data, and paginate data. So to install that package inside of our application, we will do .NET add package, and the package name is Microsoft.ASPNetCore.com components dot quick grid and that would add it to our application now let us get into the application in vs code since i need to have some sample data what i'll do is in the models folder i will create a new c sharp class called student in this class i will add some standard properties so we have id first name last name and school to be able to generate some sample data, I'm going to add a method called getStudents that will give me about 45 items of data. So I will paste this code in here. And what I just did is add a method called getStudents. And this is a static method that returns a list of student objects. And we have about 45 of these student objects. Because I want to mix Blazor and ASP.NET MVC, I'm going to create a components folder. And inside this folder, I will create the following files. I will create imports.razor. I will also create routes.razor and app.razor. The content of imports.razor will be as follows. These are things that are needed with Blazor. We're here importing basically the namespace of our application. We're importing the namespace of these files here in our application. We're importing the quick grid and we're importing also the classes that exist 
in the models folder here of which we have student.cs. In the app.razor file, you will add this content. Bear in mind that you have to adjust this namespace to match the namespace of your application. We will also add this content to the routes.razor file. This allows for the routing of Blazor components. We are now in a position to create our Blazor component. In the components folder, we can create a new folder called pages. And in this pages folder, we can create the file that's going to contain our component. In our case, we're going to create a file called students.razor. Inside of this file, we're going to create our Blazor component. So the contents of that would look something like this. The route would be slash students. It's going to use interactive server render mode. This is the title of the page. And we have an H1 tag here. This quick grid is going to display student ID, student name, which is a combination of first name and last name. And note that there is a templated column here and also the school. We have here a paginator and the rest of the code here is really the quick grid code. The main objective here is not so much to talk to you about the quick grid component, but to demonstrate to you that you can take a Blazor component and inject it into an ASP.NET MVC page, or for that matter, a Razor pages view. There is some plumbing that needs to be done in our program.cs file. So let's open that up. We need to import a namespace, and that would be using MVC with Blazor. This is our namespace dot component. And this is interesting because this really points to the components folder here, which we created earlier on. The next piece of plumbing that we need to do is to add services over here with our builder object. We're going to add razor components, interactive server components, and this here add circuit options this is really for debugging purposes. We also need to add this line of code, use anti-forgery, and this goes right after use routing. Finally, just before app run, we need to add this code here. And this does mapping for Blazor, and it also adds interactive server render mode. We are now ready to find out if we can access the student's Blazor component from inside of our MVC app. So back in the terminal window, we can do .NET watch. Our application shows up in a browser. Of course, we don't see our student's component, but we know that the route is slash students. So if we do that, there you go. You see our component is alive and kicking in our MVC app. Although this is encouraging, we're not really done because we want to use the component tag helper in our view. In other words, if you go under views, home, and you have your index.cshtml, essentially we want to be able to add the component tag helper to display our Blazor component right in here. To that end, we have to make Blazor visible to our MVC app. And the way to do that is to come into this views view imports file. Two namespaces are necessary here. We have the components namespace and the components pages namespace. And note that the students component sits here. The next step is to add some code into our layout file under views shared layout. And over here, we need to add this to the head section of our layouts page. And this basically says that the base route is the root. The next thing we want to do also is to add this component tag in here. And what this does is it makes sure that in our student component 
if you look at our students file, let's bring it up here. We have this tag, the page title. This code that we just put in there makes sure that that page title is surfaced whenever our pages are accessed. One last thing we need to do is add some JavaScript that is used by Blazor. And that goes at the bottom just before render section async. And this loads up this blazor.web.js file. We are now in a position to go to our page, which is index.cshtml and add this component tag that points to our students blazor component and the render mode is going to be server pre-rendered. Let's try our page now. Go back here and let's go to the root. And there you go. We've actually injected blazor into our homepage just to prove to you that it is indeed in the homepage. Let me get rid of this welcome section. And if I go back to my page, you will see that it updated. So what have we done? We've actually succeeded in injecting Blazor in our ASP.NET MVC. So you can mix and match Blazor and ASP.NET MVC or Blazor and Razor pages. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Thank you.